I'd like to welcome you back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. And this is another Windows Server 2012 video. Let me say, and if you watch the opening slide, you'll know that I now have a course open that you can learn all about Windows Server 2012 from installation to administration to management and everything in between. So please have a look at it and sign up for that course today. It's very, very inexpensive because I want everybody to be able to take the course. Once again, that's Windows Server 2012. Today here we are on our start screen, which does look a lot like Windows 8. They based it off of Windows 8, I guess, with the tiles. And we're going to be talking about DNS and taking a look at Windows uh, Server 2012's DNS. So let's go ahead and click on DNS. And we're going to have a look at this. Now, it is the basis of the whole thing here is the exact same uh, layout as what we had in Server 2008 R2. But I wanted to walk you through. It just looks a little bit different, but we want to walk through here today, and I'm going to show you a couple tricks with your DNS that you can do, and this will also work on Server 2008. If you click on the Forward Zone lookups, and go to your home server 2012 or whatever your domain is called. You will see in here your hosts that are pulled into your DNS. Now remember, ordinarily DNS is dynamically assigned. So when something new comes on your network, it will pick it up in here and have your host name and it will have the IP address over on this side where it says data. Now you can if you have such things as printers, scanners on your network, anything that you want to give an IP address to and be able to find it by name, those do not dynamically get put into your DNS manager. Sometimes, or most times, you're going to have to actually add those yourself unless you want to search for those by IP address. So how do we do that? Let's just simply right click in our DNS manager here and create a new host a record. Now the name will call it will go with your home server and it will be a name of your device. So let's say if we have a front office printer. Front office printer. So now if we search that front office printer, we want it to actually come back or be able to resolve it to the IP address. Let's say that particular IP address is 10.16.100.20. Even though that may not be in your DHCP scope, we can still have this in here because we're using this DNS server to look up things on our network. Click Add Host. It says the record was successfully created. Click on Done. Now you can see here front office printer is in here now with the IP address of 10.16.100.2. So now whenever you go out and you go to add a IP printer, you can actually add it using its name, Front Office Printer. Now to see if this actually works, we're going to go ahead and do a test here. So we will go back to our start window here, and we are going to open up a command prompt. Now in this command prompt, I'm going to test this by doing a ping command. Ping front office printer and enter. And we can see here, of course, it's going to error out because there's no printer on my network here uh, with that name. But you can see that it does resolve back to that IP address. So it knows right away where that's actually going to. So it is very, very useful and it's very easy to do. Also with your DNS server, don't forget you can go in here and use the aliases. You can use CNames. This is where you would use for your mail exchange. If you are using this for a outside uh, domain, you can use it for your mail exchange, uh, new domains, new uh, delegations, and other new records. So there's a ton of stuff you can do in DNS. But remember, most times it's dynamically hosted and we don't really have to pay too much concern about it. You can also have multiple DNS servers on your network. Some people have three or four. It just alleviates the pressure of that one doing all the lookups for you all day long. 
So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video on Windows Server 2012 DNS Manager. And I do hope that you check out my website, jackstechcorner.com. Click on the online classes and you'll go into the Windows Server 2012. Or you can still take the Windows Server 2008 R2 course, which is still going to be open and still very much uh, alive and well. Uh, we still have a lot of students in there. So hopefully I'll see you online on the course. And I'll talk to you here next time on Jack's Tech Corner for another Windows Server video tutorial. Bye for now.